Good morning from beautiful British Columbia, Victoria, BC. Today we're going to be doing a restorative yoga for self-worth. Restorative yoga for self-worth. Of course, you're going to need all your props, so get all your props out. And I'm really looking forward to this class with you today. If you're joining us live, then be sure to let us know in the comments uh, your name and where you're joining us from. And if you see anybody else you know in the comments, say hello to them as well. I know we have a lot of members that are joining us, so you can pop in that secret emoji that we have as members so we know you're a member. And uh, say hello to our other members in there as well. It's always great to uh, see people. And welcome to everybody uh, joining us today live. If you aren't joining us live, uh, we'll be starting the class in about 13 minutes. So I like to hop on here uh, about 15 minutes early uh, to say hello and have a little chat with people who are joining in live. And um, so if you are watching on the replay, then just know that the actual class will start in about 13 minutes. So you can just skip ahead to that, not waste any of your precious time. Uh, so welcome everybody. This is going to be restorative yoga for self-worth. It's a beautiful day in Victoria, BC. We've got a sun cloud mix looks like, and it's nice and cool here. I was talking to my girlfriend on the East Coast yesterday, and apparently it was feeling like 45 degrees. <laughs> and oh my God, that sounds so hot. I know it's been heat waves all over the world this summer. And we're just so grateful to have that cooler weather here now. I know we experienced a heat dome here earlier in the summer and it was just impossible so i don't know how you guys are dealing with it if you've still got one going on tim's asking me to check the audio uh see if we're hearing okay i'm gonna pull up my phone in a second and i just want to thank you all so much for your feedback on the video we have two channels here so this main channel uh is where we post a video every single friday and you know, we're coming up on 600 episodes. We're kind of looking at, you know, gosh, we've been doing this for 12 years now, coming up in just a couple of weeks in September, actually at a few days, really. <laughs> we're almost a few days away from September. It'll be 12 years we've been doing this and we're reflecting on, you know, we've been releasing a video every week. Well, you know, sometimes we'll take a couple of weeks off and we're thinking about, you know, how do we want to, is this sustainable for us, you know, after 12 years? How do we want to be doing this differently in the next 12 years in a way that can be sustainable? And so we're talking about, we've been filming the entire winter season so that you always have, except for when we do lives, outdoor classes filmed in beautiful locations in BC. And, you know, we're looking at how other people are filming on YouTube now. And, you know, we're, we're thinking it's time for us to do seasons you know where we'll at the end of 600 episodes we're gonna probably take some longer chunks of breaks and uh, dedicate ourselves to our members and when we run courses in the membership really um, you know put our bandwidth and our energy into that at times so rather than being spread so thin and always having our energy yes yeah, spread thin so those are some of the things that are coming up but I did want to thank you all as I said, we do have two channels. Uh, if you didn't know that, we have another channel called Yoga Lifestyle with Melissa that you can check out. Maybe Tim can put in the uh, chat box here. Uh, we released a video this week where, <laughs> from speaking of being spread a bit thin, it was we filmed it in June when our anniversary was, and we've just gotten around to releasing it on uh, our 25th wedding anniversary where we sat down and we just answered some questions about being married for that long. And the response to this has been really uh, heartwarming and overwhelming. It's tons and tons of comments on my website and in the, in the um, YouTube comments. And so I, we just wanted to both thank you for that. And uh, it's really nice when people <laughs> take interest in your life, right? So thank you for that. And if you haven't seen it, if you're interested, uh, we answer questions about our marriage and being married that long and just talk about our life. And uh, people really enjoyed it. And also congratulations to all of you. Like, you know, we felt like 25 years is unusual on YouTube. Most people have married, married short periods of time because we were early adopters of YouTube. 
And, but a lot of you who responded were like, yeah, we've been married 40 years or 35 years or 39 years. So congratulations to all of you who have been, had such long marriages. It's, we know it's, um, there's a lot of give and take and forgiveness and uh, generosity that comes uh, for being in relationships for long periods of time. So let's uh, come in and I'll find, find myself here on, on here and say hello to people who are here. Here we are in the live class. Okay, so hello, uh, Dahlia Rose from Sweden. Welcome, it's good to see you here. Um, nice evening, I hope you're having a nice evening there. Hello, Sarah Carnes from Indiana. Hello, Yo Yoga with Molly from Wisconsin. And Carl Kropp from St. Paul, Minnesota. Viviana Garcia is here from Buenos Aires, and Axel's here from Germany. Glad the audio is good. Thanks for letting us know. Tammy Augusta is here, and uh, it's great to have you guys here. Uh, Tanya is here from Belgrade, and I'm seeing the secret emojis here from our members, so that's great. Mark's here from Oregon in the Pacific Northwest, like us. Um, Tony is here from Edmonton. Welcome. And um, thank you for the anniversary, which is, we really, we really, Tim, we really uh, have prolonged our anniversary by posting that in August, haven't we? <laughs> um, hello. Did you see the one from It's up near the top. I'm just starting. Okay. Eve is here from the Netherlands. And Lorraine is here from... Uh, well, she's just saying she's grateful to be here. Magdalena's here, and Kim is here from Thief River Falls. Ooh, that's a cool sounding place in Minnesota. So welcome, everybody. And uh, people are still joining in. So just a few words about this class. We've got seven minutes before we start, so probably more people will be joining in. And are we, are we broadcasting on both YouTube channels and Facebook today? No. No. Just this main YouTube channel, okay. The quality, the quality was very good, okay. So a few words about this um, class today. Um, I'm just, we're going into something really special. Tim and I have been doing um, some filming over the last few days, setting up the uh, videos and the emails and all the infrastructure for something really special that's going to be coming for everybody in October. It's starting for our members in just a few days in September. And uh, this class kind of uh, came out of uh, what I mentored our leaders in our membership community uh, for um, that's what's coming in September. So this class is on self-worth. What's coming is not on self-worth, but it's more particularly on really reconnecting with yoga that you love. Uh, and so it's very individual, more stepping back and connecting with intention and aspiration and what you love. And uh, coming up in September, after our YouTube Lives, we'll be having a special time as soon as the Lives are finished. Uh, for our, exclusively for our members right after we'll be meeting on Zoom to uh, fill out our daily yoga journals so that uh, we can have time together to really reflect on our last uh, month of practice and plan out our following months. So that's going to be exclusively for members right following the live and it's going to tie into what we're really stepping into as a membership over the next um, four or five months from September, October, November, December, and January. So it's a really exciting time and you guys, everybody will get to be a part of it in October. I'm not going to say more about it right now because we have a ton of stuff coming out about that. Sort of that will come out uh, midway through September. So just a little teaser about that and just to say that some of the mentoring that I did with our leaders um, and the work that I took them through this um, with uh, inspired this class and it just really steps into 
a lot of depth, a lot of meaning, a lot of connection with your yoga practice. And I'm really thrilled to roll this out in September, particularly with our members. And then um, to give you guys a taste of everybody, a taste of it in October. So more people are joining us. So that's a little teaser for you. Um, let's see who else is joining us now. Um, Deborah is here and everybody's saying congratulations on our anniversary. Uh, Jackie's here, hello. And Carrie's here from Colorado. Sean's here, uh, Jackie's here. It's nice to see you guys saying hello to each other as well. Colleen's here. And uh, Donna Parks is here from New York City. So nice to see everybody. Connie is here from Massachusetts. And, uh, and she's really excited to hear about the behind the scenes work. Yeah, it's been, uh, this summer we have really taken advantage of the nice weather and it's been, it's been pretty full on, hasn't it, Tim? Doing filming, we are filmed up to March right now for Yoga with Melissa for you guys. And we have, I think, three more classes to film and then we'll be filmed up to April so that I know we, the feedback that we hear from you guys here on Yoga with Melissa is that you love the outdoor settings, you love British Columbia, and so we just decided that we wanted to be able to go through the winter season and not film on this gray wall through the winter. It's, I mean, it works really well for the live streams, but we wanted to be able to bring you that the beauty of BC through the whole winter. And also then hopefully what it'll do is really free me up once it gets cold to be able to focus in on bigger proje projects in the membership and two minutes thank you honey focus on bigger projects in the membership and really focus in on finishing up the book the five element self uh the elemental self five element yin yoga which is just so close to being finished. I'm writing the introduction right now, then the conclusion, and then it comes to designing the whole book and doing all the photos for the book. So uh, it's always the last part of the project that takes the longest. So um, that's where we're at. And we're just trying to clear all these bigger projects to be able to create some space to do the, create the, you know, the stuff that we do every day, like the yoga with Melissa's, to be able to focus on bigger projects um, that are gonna make a big difference. So Tim says we have one minute. So uh, I see Sandy's joined us from Colorado. As I said, we're doing restorative yoga for self-worth today. For this class, you're going to need a bolster, two blocks, a strap, and um, just, you know, all your props because it is a restorative yoga class. And um, Colleen's saying it's exciting about the book. I am going to be sad when the book is over, but <laughs> I'm also at this place where I'm just like, you know, really struggling to finish too. <laughs> Anybody who's written a book, I'm sure will understand that. <laughs> Yeah, I see that. Elia's here from Finland, so welcome. And uh, it's great. We've got a great, uh, a great class here today, a great class size. So welcome, everybody. And I see that we're at 9 o'clock, so I will, what I'll do is I'll turn off the chat now, and we'll really focus on uh, our practice now for the next hour, and then we can come back and uh, connect again at the end. So... Um, let me turn on airplane mode. Okay, so welcome to this restorative yoga for self-worth. Today, you're going to need all your props, and you're going to start by resting back for centering. So maybe place a bolster underneath your knees, and you could put pull a blanket over top of you if it's cool where you are or put an eye pillow on your eyes whatever is going to make you most comfortable right now you're going to be resting back here for five minutes and just begin by 
resting back with that one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly by connecting with yourself. And feeling your connection with the earth. Feeling your body. Noticing how you're feeling emotionally and energetically. Feeling your breath moving through your body. Without needing to fix or change it in any way. And then just check in and see and notice what you'd like to receive from your practice today. It might be something physical, maybe something for your mind, maybe emotional, energetic or spiritual. I have a quote from John O'Donohue to start our class. And all the resources that I use in this class for the readings will be in the show notes afterwards, so you don't need to worry about that. May you, may you recognize in your life the presence, power, and light of your soul. May you realize that you are never alone, that your soul and its brightness and belonging connects you intimately with the rhythm of the universe. May you have respect for your own individuality and difference. May you realize that the shape of your soul is unique that you have a special destiny here. That behind the facade of your life, there is something beautiful, good, and eternal happening. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, and expectation with which God sees you in every moment.
Okay, you can start to wiggle and stretch out. And then we're going to come into our first restorative yoga pose, which is restorative frog. And so for this one, you're going to have your bolster at the base of your mat. And you're going to lie on your stomach. You might want to have an eye pillow at the top of your mat. Your feet are going to be on the top of your bolster. The soles of your feet are going to be together. Your knees are going to be wide. And you're going to rest on your belly. So you're going to be in this pose for five minutes. So give yourself a little bit of time just to settle in. And get cozy. So this reading comes from Danielle Kopka's Daring to Take Up Space book. You don't have to be productive to be worth something. Doing more doesn't make you better or smarter or more valuable. And taking a break doesn't make you lazy. It makes you human. No one can endlessly work without needing time to decompress. No one is always going, doing, and creating. Every person needs quiet moments and slow days. Days when you don't have energy to do anything more than just exist. And you're allowed that, you're allowed to rest. You're allowed to slow down and breathe, to have days when you aren't working towards some greater purpose or plan. Resting is productive in its own right. You can't be successful if you're running on empty And you can't give the best version of yourself if you're constantly rejecting your self-care. There's strength in being someone who honors what they need to cope and survive. Strength in honoring your seasons and giving yourself permission to shed everything you're carrying for a moment so that you can bloom at a later time. You deserve to rest if you need it. You deserve to have days reserved to do nothing. Even if other people with your same struggles did more. Even if you could have pushed yourself a little harder. Even if you took a break yesterday. Whatever you manage to do today is enough. No matter what, you're enough.
You're going to slowly release this pose from your body. And we're going to set up our next pose, which is supported child's pose. If that's too much for your knees, your ankles, and your feet, you can always lie on your back with your um, with your knees into your chest instead. I like to do supported child's pose with my bolster elevated, but if you like it flat on the ground, you do you. It's totally fine. Um, you're going to be in this pose for 10 minutes, so definitely set up your bolster in a way that works best for you. And when we're setting up our restorative poses, we want to make sure that we take lots of time to settle in. And I'll try to let you know about halfway through um, to turn your head to the other side so that your neck gets equal time with your head turned one way and the other. In this pose, it's really nice to feel the opening in your low back and then breathe into your low back. Breathe into the lower lobes of your lungs and your low back. This is another reading from Danielle Kopka from her book, Daring to Take Up Space. Your life doesn't have to be an adventure full of excitement, full of excitement and new experiences and beauty to be meaningful, meaningful and worthwhile. It can be quiet, and mundane and unremarkable and still be valuable and deserving of pride. So your life doesn't have to be an adventure full of excitement and new experiences and beauty to be meaningful and worthwhile. It can be quiet and mundane and unremarkable and still be valuable and deserving of pride. Even if you're home most of the time even if you're sick and struggling and stay in bed, even if you go through the motions every day, even if you don't go to new places and experience new things, your life is still important and worth living. It's okay to just be. It's okay for things to be unexciting and routine to have smaller and quieter, less shareable moments of happiness. It's okay and it's normal and it's what everyone else's life looks like most of the time. So whatever you did today, please trust that it was enough. Whatever you're able to do tomorrow, it will be enough. However you navigate the world over the course of your life and whatever part you play in it, you are enough.
Okay, so go ahead and turn your head to the other side for the final moments, the final five minutes of this pose. So your neck gets equal time, stretch one side and the other.
Okay, we're going to slowly come up off of our bolster here. And for the next one, you're going to lay it down flat. I'm going to put mine on top of my blocks like this because my bolster is really quite flattened out lately. Um, just stretch out your legs a little bit. Give them a little shake out. Our next pose is going to be supported pigeon pose, or you could take figure four on your back. It's up to you. So for this one, we'll bring our left leg forward and bent first and reach your right leg back and long. And you can fill the space here with a blanket or a cushion. You're going to be in this pose for five minutes. So you want to really just check in in this pose first as you settle in. Um, just make sure that there's nothing happening in your knee, that you feel all the sensation in your abductors, your outer thighs, and your glutes. So it wants to be really back here into the glutes and the outer thighs. So nothing sharp or shooting or electric, especially in the knee joint. And then really settle into your props, into your bolster, into the ground, into the earth. Let there be space between your teeth. Soften the space between your eyebrows. So another uh, reading by Danielle Kopka from her book, Daring to, Daring to Take Up Space. Whatever journey you're on or struggle you're working through, you'll get to where you want to be. It doesn't matter if you go more slowly than other people. It doesn't matter if you slip and fall and make mistakes that take you backwards. What matters is that you are here and trying, and that's all you can ask of yourself. There's nothing written in stone that says certain accomplishments have to be achieved by a certain age or in a certain time frame. You're allowed to go at your own pace. You're allowed to have a journey that looks different than other people's. You're allowed to go more slowly or faster, or take a completely different path altogether. This isn't weakness. It's honoring your unique needs, and it's okay and valid. Forward is forward. You're taking steps every day to get where you want to be, and it's enough no matter how fast or slow you go. You are enough.
Okay, we're going to slowly release pigeon pose from the side of our body. We'll go ahead and set it up on the other side of our body. So remember in restorative yoga, we're really focusing on letting go into the props, letting go of all physical tension into the props and the ground. So your goal in restorative yoga is to seek and find tension and let it go. So notice tension in the shoulders trying to release down and into the props, the neck, space between your teeth, softening between the eyebrows, When your mind wanders, it's really good to bring it back to a decided focus of attention. It could be sensations in your body, it could be your breath, it could be a mantra. One that I find is useful is as I breathe in, I say, I am here. And as I breathe out, I say, this is now. I am here, this is now. I am here as you breathe in, this is now as you breathe out.
Okay, you're going to release this pose from your body. And we'll put aside um, some of our props. You're just going to need your bolster for, I'm pretty sure this is your last pose before your Shavasana. Yeah. Okay, so put aside your blocks and your cushion. And you're going to lie down on your back. This is going to be a reclined twist. So your bolster will be on the left side of your body. Your arms will be out in a soft T. Press into your feet, lift your hips, take them over to the right side of your mat, and then let your knees just fall on the bolster. And this should just give you a nice gentle twist. You'll be here for five minutes. And just let yourself settle in. Feel your breath in your right side lung here. So a final reading from Danielle Kopka's book, Daring to Take Up Space. There's a lot of talk about showing up and trying your best. But it's important to recognize that your best doesn't mean delivering your top performance. It means giving all you can without compromising your health or hurting yourself while still knowing your limits and honoring where you are. There's a lot of talk about showing up and trying your best, but it's important to recognize that your best doesn't mean delivering your top performance. It means giving all you can without compromising your health or hurting yourself while still knowing your limits and honoring where you are. That isn't weakness or failure. It's smart and it's self-care and it's human and it's okay. It's okay if the best that you can give at any moment isn't the same as someone else's best. We're all in different places and we all grapple with a unique set of struggles and limitations. Your best is allowed to look different. It often will. No matter how much it deviates from people around you, what you're able to give is still valid and valuable. There's quiet strength in being gentle with yourself strength in withholding some of your effort and energy if it means you know you are choosing self-care and survival over self-sabotage and mental breakdown. Life is hard and you're allowed to show up imperfectly. You're going to do your best and you can in each moment and you can do you're going to do the best you can in each moment with what you have where you are, and it's enough. You are enough.
Okay, and then you're going to place your feet back on the floor, press into your feet and untuck your hips and just give your spine a chance to unravel. Listen to your body, listen to signs of your parasympathetic nervous system, maybe deep sighs, maybe your digestive system is kicking in. And then we're going to do the other side. So you'll take your bolster over to your right side now your hands in a soft T again. Press into your feet, lift your hips over to the left side of your mat, and then just gently let your knees drop onto the bolster on the right side now. And give yourself a little bit of time just to settle in to the twist. Let your rib cage settle. Feel your breath in your left rib here. Really soaking in the benefit of restorative yoga in your last restorative yoga pose before you integrate in Shavasana. Your spine here is getting such a beautiful massage. Your spine protecting your central nervous system. So massaging your central nervous system here. Opening up your breath in a very different way here. So, so many beautiful things happening in this pose that you just get to receive in such a passive way in restorative yoga. I am here, this is now. And feel the beauty of practicing this restorative class together today. So receive the beauty of devoting this hour to yourself, of nourishing yourself in this way.
Okay, you're going to slowly come back to center. Press into your feet and untuck your hips. Give your spine a chance to unravel. And then take the time to set yourself up for your final resting position. It might be nice to take a bolster underneath your knees. And if your body has cooled over the course of this practice, you may wish to place, pull a blanket up over top of you, put an eye pillow on your eyes. We're gonna finish the way we started with one hand on our hearts, one hand on our belly. You'll be in your Shavasana for five minutes. So allow this time to be a time for you to receive your practice, to integrate your practice, for your practice to settle into all the layers of your being, physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, and spiritually. To just check in and See if you received what you wanted to receive from your class today. to put down anything that you're still carrying. Any burdens that you're still holding. And to reflect back on the practice and notice what stands out, what seems most important. When you reflect back on this restorative yoga class for self-worth, what are you carrying with you off of your mat and into your life? I want to close with the same words that we started from John O'Donohue from his book, Anamkara, a book of Celtic wisdom. May you recognize in your life the presence, power, and light of your soul. May you realize that you are never alone that your soul and its brightness and belonging connects you intimately with the rhythm of the universe. May you have respect for your own individuality and difference. May you realize that the shape of your soul is unique, that you have a special destiny here, that behind the facade of your life there is something beautiful, good, and eternal happening. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, and expectation with what God sees you in every moment.
So continue to feel into your body and notice what part of your body you would like to wiggle and stretch out and move and begin to invite movement into that part of your body first. Starting to deepen your breath and move and wiggle and stretch out. And then you can bend your knees, roll to your side, and slowly make your way up to a seated position. We'll gather the fruits of our practice first into ourselves, because we are worthy, and then we'll offer them out into the world, because everybody is worthy. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu May all beings be happy and free and may the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So we are here live today and I'll stay and we'll have a little chat after with the people who, that are here live. But thank you so much to everybody who's joined us live and on the replay. We appreciate so much um, you giving us a thumbs up. That helps us a lot. And um, if you can put in the comments, I am worthy, that also helps us and it just solidifies your own practice. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we would love you to do that. You'll get um, lots more beautiful classes like this for you. And also know what's coming up. We've got some really great things coming up for you, as I said, in October. And um, as I said, um, starting in September, no, it is September, in October. <laughs> it's August, oh my gosh, we're filming so far ahead, I'm losing track. In our after our live in September, our members w will be going right after um, and doing a member exclusive, where we'll be taking our beautiful yoga journals, which we're uh, going to be starting. To, I'll be teaching them how to fill them out um, starting this month, and uh, we'll be having time uh, to reflect on our last month and fill them out for the following month. Right after our. Um, lives here. So it'll be a member exclusive um, right following the YouTube lives at the end of the month, every month, which will be perfect time to do it for the yoga journal. So that'll be a member exclusive on Zoom afterwards. There'll be lots of details coming up about that in September. So um, let's check in. I have time to stay and uh, chat with you guys. If you have any questions or comments about this class or yoga in general, then I'm happy to answer them. Now I will come back to the class here. I'm seeing lots of comments about I am worthy. It's great to have everybody with us today. Love to know what you guys are getting up to this weekend and what your yoga plans are for the rest of the weekend. Um, Let's see, Kathy says, I am worthy. Tamea says, thank you very much. Deborah says, I'm worthy. Carmina says, I'm worthy. Pam says, I'm worthy. Micro says, I'm worthy. Johnny says, I am worthy. This is a m great midday practice. It dispelled some of my anxiety for the day. I love restorative yoga for anxiety. It just, it's very grounding. This class was quite grounding, I found. Vivian says, I'm worthy. Um, Tamiya says, I'm worthy. Tammy says, I'm worthy. Micro says, thank you. Tanya says, I'm worthy. Thank you. Kim says, thank you. Just what I needed. Christina says, I am worthy. Thank you for this beautiful offering. Kristen says, I am worthy. Thank you for bringing the readings. It's very validating. I really enjoy those readings too. I found that they were really great. I enjoyed it. I really encourage you guys to check them out. I've got links in the show notes 
uh, to where you can check out her book. Also, uh, you can check her out on Instagram. She's got a great account on Instagram too, Danielle Kopka. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, thanks to YouTube, live streams are always kind of hit or miss. <laughs> you know, we, whenever you're live, you never know what you're going to get. And Tim just said we had great quality all through today. So that's great. Uh, Donna says she just wants to sleep now. Deborah also said, I loved your choice of readings. Yeah, um, that was, again, it was Danielle Kovka, and it's from her book, Daring to Take Up Space. And also I had a John O'Donohue reading to bookend. I think it's really nice to lean on other people's readings. That was something because I've been writing so much, I thought, you know, I need to just give myself permission to when I'm teaching to to lean on other people's writings right now because uh, I've been <laughs> writing so much. So that's uh, what I did. Um, Karen says, thank you, this is really helpful. She has breast cancer right now and she's waiting for an operation. So she helped me to de-stress and relax and it was very appreciated. That's a really hard thing to be going through right now, Karen. I'm, I hope that your operation goes well and I hope that um, you will be cancer free after your operation and our thoughts and prayers are with you. And I'll just ask that everybody who's watching uh, sends extra prayers to Karen um, can everybody see in the comments Karen's message? Let's just all send her some extra healing energy as she goes into her operation, because um, that's really scary, isn't it? Nobody wants a nobody wants to be going through that. Um, Gail says, "Love you," and John O'Donohue, <laughs> John O'Donohue, such a gorgeous writer. Thank goodness he wrote and published so much before he passed. He passed so. Young, he was, um, I think, 54 when he uh, died really unexpectedly of a heart attack, and uh, so grateful to have his writings. Um, reminded that my day might seem simple, and yet magic is in there, Deborah said, and that is so true. When we spend time to find the magic, it is definitely worth it. I've been doing this practice lately. Um, everybody says to look for to do those gratitude lists and it's like i've heard it so many times that it's like yeah and i dismissed it but i've been writing out 25 things that i'm grateful for every day and because it's 25 it's easy to pump out five but because it's 25 it really slows you down because after about 10 you have to you have to really search and it it's uh yeah it slows you down <laughs> And you have to keep looking and digging and it gets you into beyond the surface things, into the deeper things, into the more mental, emotional things. And like Deborah says, it's um, it's the simple and magical things, the more mysterious things. And it, it goes deeper into the meaning. It's very nourishing practice. Um, Lorraine says she loved the poetry. She's looking forward to... Um, Going to the sandwich festival? That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's in Kent. Can we get there? <laughs> I want to. I want to do that. <laughs> okay, you guys, tell me uh, other the rest of your plans for the weekend because that sounds awesome. <laughs> Actually, Tim, we have amazing plans this weekend. Um, one of our members is here this weekend, so we're going for brunch. So we don't have the sandwich festival, but. Yeah, Brenda's coming this weekend. We're going for brunch with her one of the days, Saturday or Sunday. Okay, thank you everybody for sending Karen wonderful healing energy. I see that all happening. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Um, look at that. Isn't that the power of connection and community? Thank you, everybody, for sending healing energy to Karen. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you everybody for sending that healing energy to Karen. On that, let's um, keep Karen in our prayers as she, hands, sends, as she heads into her operation. And let's, uh, you know, when our hearts are in gratitude, it's easier to be open and generous. So let's think about the, that, fam that sandwich festival. <laughs> Lorraine at the sandwich festival. <laughs> and Nina's going to couples therapy, excellent. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> well, that's always hard, but it always it always comes out better at the other end. Does it? Doesn't it? Tim, Boys. really? When has it not been better when we've well, gone for us? For us. Sure okay, well. Okay, back to the sandwich festival. Let's open our hearts with the sandwich festival. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I, I love hearing about those joyful things. That sandwich festival is going on my gratitude list today. Just thinking about it makes me happy. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being here. I appreciate that. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And yeah, I look so forward to, I'm so looking forward to this next month with our members. We have... As I said, this came out, this class came out of what's coming up for our members in September. And then we're going to be launching something super special for everybody in October uh, that will be going even deeper in our membership community on. So stay tuned for that and lots of members exclusives coming up through the next few months. So much love, many blessings. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody.